Welcome to the Occupational Safety Leadership Podcast, episode number 189. And in today's episode, we'll talk about corrective actions and tracking. Um, And of course, these can come from numerous sources, um, uh, audits, inspections, if you've had a a, uh, OSHA inspection, uh, EPA, if you're doing the environmental stuff, because really it's anytime you're tracking a uh, action, you got to look at just, well, I shouldn't say that you have to. I should say what really works great for me is to sit down, rank it by priority. Oh, I'm jumping ahead of myself here then. So some things, of course, are going to be very uh, easy to correct. It could be a uh, correction in the specification or a form or a form was not filled out correctly. Very, uh, it doesn't mean that it doesn't have to be addressed, you know. But those are a whole lot easier than trying to uh, address things for root cause from a uh, accident, lack of engineering controls, lack of PPE. So, so there's a lot of different, is it, a, is it a low hazard, is it a high hazard? And when we look at consequences and all that, um, that's really for a lot of the other um, podcasts where we've sat down and looked at consequence and severity and risk and, and how do we really rank things um, in the ideal world, we get it all done at the same time. Everything has exactly the same weight and all that. But I think as safety professionals, we know that we want to get the most bang for the buck. Can't fix everything. It would be awesome if we had unlimited time, money, resources. Everybody did everything right exactly the first time. That just doesn't always happen. And you'll also see as you um, start to go back and follow up with folks, to some people, to you, it's a very big issue that has to be addressed, but to others, because they may not understand the gravity, they just haven't gotten around to it because to them, they just don't see what the urgency is. So a lot of times, it's it's up to us, the safety professional, to talk about how we're doing these priorities and then the level of effort that really needs to be put into this. So... Um, So when we kind of think about these, we're going to look at a priority and then we're going to look at what solutions that we're going to use out there, you know. And so some things, of course, are going to be found from a uh, safety inspection, from a walkthrough, quite possibly your safety is linked in with the QA stuff. And so the QA has uh, has noticed the nonconformity. So, so there's a lot of different ways that we can um, we can find where these things that have to be uh, corrected. So one of the biggest things um, that really helps me is when you sit down and, and assign responsibility, it has to go to one person. And of course, obviously, if that person leaves, you just assign it to the person that took that person's spot then but to one person if you just said something very vague like uh the maintenance department will correct the following issue that's awesome and great because you've identified an issue and you want to correct it and you want to move forward but if you don't have a person somebody that has to be the driver out there you're going to be the champion of course you want the stuff done somebody has to actually execute it because you can't do everything then so uh, it might be Bob Smith in charge of maintenance will do this. And, of course, Bob may choose to um, pass it along to somebody else. That's awesome and great. But Bob's the one who's responsible, not the other person. Bob can't go back and say, well, the other person's slow and all that. It's no, if, if it's assigned to you, Bob, you're the person in charge. You are the one that gets it done out there. And that's where a lot of times we have to go back and explain the why behind it. Everyone's pulled in a lot of directions out there. But if you literally sit down and talk to folks, I know in today's age, we like to think that we shot somebody a Skype or an email. And that's not always the best way to uh, communicate. I also know that sometimes we're forced to communicate that way because we're working in multiple distributed sites uh, travel is not the way that it used to be. You know, travel is awesome, but it also takes time, too. So anytime it takes time away from your job, that means you're less efficient at the same time, too. So you have to have a person out there responsible. And a deadline has to be a deadline out there, you know. And with that, of course, 
um, the one thing that I ask for is a timely update. And maybe the update is on a, uh, if it's something that's relatively easy, but maybe it's a weekly basis until it's done. And maybe you've given the, the folks a month, you know, to get it done. Or if it's something that's like, everything has to stop, we're doing it all right now. It's a every single day until it's fixed. So a lot of times it's going to be very situation dependent on the dead deadlines out there and all that stuff. And then finally, I know that as, as safety folks, we're being tugged in a lot of directions. Of course, we we always uh, we, we want to comply with all the OSHA stuff, which is the absolute minimum out there. But I would also say that there's a lot of companies who who I, I can't say they skip the minimums on purpose, but they but they but they say we're going to go beyond the minimum and we're going to do the following things. And sometimes they've actually not done the minimums. But in their mind, it's, yeah, but we've already exceeded that. Well, you have to really make sure that you got your, your bases covered and do the absolute minimum first, then worry about getting fancy and doing the internal company policies and industry-specific best uh, practices and all that good stuff then. So um, I have found that this is, is one of the more difficult parts of safety because most of the time we don't actually have a staff. We don't actually manage people we, we may manage other safety professionals but they don't have a, a staff out there so they can't say i've decided that everything stops until the father when things done we have to work with folks and this is where when we build that influence we built that rapport with people we're not the safety cops we're the coach we're here to help we're going to do everything we can to help to make it better but we also know that we can't hold everybody's hand we can't do everything for everybody because then you actually are the uh safety cop maybe i need to come up with a better phrase in safety cop you're the um hand holder the enabler and of course uh and it in 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 those situations a system a safety system has been created where it's all based on you so if you leave, it all falls apart then. That's not a good, a good way to operate either. So with that, I'm starting to ramble on. Let's wrap up episode number 189. So we talked about corrective actions and tracking, uh, assigning a person responsible, not a um, HR will correct the following forms. A person, you know, that person can be an HR. It can be the chief of HR. And we want to have some deadlines associated with this stuff, along with timely updates. <laughs> I'd like to say that when I ask somebody to get something done and they have two or three months, that it's going to be a number one issue for them. But I have found with without timely updates, sometimes people have really great plans and they're going to get started and they just get sidetracked on doing other stuff. And then a couple of days out, they contact you and say, oh, I haven't even started yet. You know, so I found at least with timely updates, you're keeping it on everybody's radar as things go. And there's also a lot of software out there that can that can help you with this. Then. And whether you're old school and you're doing everything on paper still, that's awesome, too. You know, it's not that you have to use a particular system you have to have a system that works for you and your company out there and with that let's wrap it up 189 is complete thank you for joining me today my name is dr david ayers thank you and have a safe day